Hi, this is Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. If you want to learn tips and tricks how to make your job as an art teacher easier and improve your classroom management, then stick around. Today we'll be talking about helper tables and art room jobs. In my classroom, I have my student tables divided up in warm colors and cool colors. And for my helpers each week, I have a warm color table that's helping as well as a cool color table that's helping. That way I have enough students to get the job done and jobs can get done a little bit more quickly. When I'm ready to um, end my lesson, I will ask the students to remain quiet so we can assign the helper jobs. And I will look at my seating chart and select students that are sitting at those tables and give them a job to go along with it. And often I have this already set up with the materials and the job tags on top. Uh, this is the little bin that I keep my job tags inside of. And what these are, are laminated name tags, and it gives the job title on there. They're on a little lanyard that I got from Oriental Trading, and I'll link that below if they still have these available. They were called paint chip. Um, and you have this little removable kind of a seatbelt latch so that if it gets caught on something, students are safe. Now, you don't have to go out and buy these cute little lanyards. Often, there are lanyards given away for free. So you can put out an email to your staff and request lanyards, and I'm sure you will get plenty to get this started. I should note that when I'm doing these, I am using my own personal laminator. So it's that extra thick lamination and not the school lamination so that these can hold up year after year. Um, I have the jobs written on there in very clear font so that students can read them. And the purpose of these job tags are for me and the students to remember what their job is. It's also a badge of honor for the students that they are in charge of that particular job. The job tags that I'm showing you here are a little template from Lindsay Flood and they're completely editable. They are on Teachers Pay Teachers and I'll be sure to link that down below because these ones are super cute. You could also make your own. A great idea would be to put some visuals along with this to help guide your students into what their job is. Now, some of them are color coded like my pencils are yellow and my erases are pink. So that's a fun idea that you might like to borrow as well. Some of the jobs I will purposely assign first because they take the most amount of time to complete. I have paper passers as one of these. If you've ever seen students, especially in the very younger grades, going around and passing out papers, this task definitely can slow them down. So I usually start with this when I'm assigning the jobs and then do the quicker ones later. It's nice to have some that are very vague, like the tools technician. So this could apply to your laminated handout sheets and reference guides that they're passing out. This could even be your little table trash buckets or any printmaking tools or specific tools that you're using for that assignment. I'm going to share all of the jobs that I use within my classroom, but you certainly can edit them and make this work for you. When the screen is up, you may want to pause the screen so you can write down and take some notes for some fun ideas. Now, being a helper is not optional. Occasionally, I'll have a fifth or a sixth grader that's really not interested in helping, but I explain that it is part of being in our community. For the other students that are very eager to help, we explain this as when it's not their turn to help, it's as if they're having a pizza delivery. They get to sit back and relax and students will bring items to them. Now, often this is a time in class where some misbehavior could happen. So I'm always sure to give these jobs first so that these students are already started on things as the other students are dismissed from the carpet. Um, the students dismissed from the carpet then will be given a job from me. Perhaps it is, please go and get on an art shirt and then sit down in your seat or go back to your table, take your stool down, and as soon as you get your pencil, begin drawing the eyes. But there is a little task that they have something that as soon as they get those materials, they do get started. I try not to have that lag time where students are waiting for me or waiting for others um, so that they are able to get focused right away and the lesson can begin moving forward. If you end up using these job tags, it's a good idea to keep some spare um, tags already printed out, ready to go. I also keep a hole punch in this little box and some extra lanyards should I need them. Rarely do they break, but just in case or to freshen them up the next school year. My first job is paper passers. So this is someone that could be passing out um, exit tickets, planning sheets, 
or reference guides. Um, the eraser expert passes out erasers. I have students place four erasers in the center of each table. My crayon crew passes out crayons. I have my crayons organized in three different bins. One is skin colors. One is just the regular colors. And then I have the green baskets that you see here, which are special colors like the glitter and the construction paper and the neon and sparkle crayons. Paintbrush Pal passes out any paintbrushes that are needed. The Glue Guru passes out um, glue sticks or liquid glue. Um, we've been using liquid glue in these little jars that you see here um, with a brush attached. These are from Colorations. We're really loving these lately. Um, Sharpie Scout passes out the permanent markers. The Marker Manager would pass out our marker baskets. The Paint Passer would help to pass out paint trays or egg cartons with paint inside. The tools technician would pass out, you know, any tools that were needed for the project. I have art teacher's assistant just in case there's an extra job that I can come up with um, if I have an uneven number of students. Uh, so someone could be assisting me in any way that I need. The scissor scout is a job that I do have students do at the end. They um, help to, and this is only if needed, if, if I need an extra job uh, to cover the tables, they would check and see that all the scissors are there. My students really love uh, doing this for some reason. So we rarely do this job because they kind of are very motivated to do this on their own without putting someone in charge of it. Um, the water waiter is someone that gets the water cups, fills them up with water, and then brings them to each table. I have students put water in the corner of each table. So each table has four. And finally, the pencil passer. I do have students pass out a whole cup of pencils in case one breaks, they can just switch it out. And my pencils live there in Pennsylvania. That's a convenient spot and perfect name so that students remember where these go. And as you can see, they are marked with a little spot so we can see if one of the cups is missing. Two things I would note. I do not do these jobs with kindergarten. If I do them, it might be in the very, very last weeks of school, mostly because kindergartners are very self-centered and they just really want to get started themselves. So they're not very careful that they're helping each and every one of their friends with the task. It usually takes an IA or myself to kind of support a student to be able to help all the other students and pass out materials at the kindergarten level. In first grade, I definitely do this. And I teach the other students, as I do with the other grade levels, what do these jobs look like? So everyone's still on the carpet. These people are starting the job and we're narrating what they're doing. We're explaining they're not giving each and every person a single pencil. Do you notice they're taking the pencil cups and putting them in the middle of the table? You know, we'll explain how to pass out the erasers. We're not throwing the erasers at somebody. We're just setting four erasers because there are four people sitting at that table right into the middle of ta the table and the students there can help themselves. Students that are not completing the job task um, correctly can be fired. And then I would note that if that happens on my note that I send back to the classroom teachers and I would lower their effort grade for that day. When the students have completed their job, they have the option of hanging them up here on these little hooks. This is just a good way for me to know that they have been returned and they're ready for use with the next class. Often the students really enjoy being the helpers and they will wear these throughout the class as a little bit of a badge of honor that they were the helpers. Now, when I get into my cleanup, which is gonna be in another video, so be sure that you check that out. When I get to that cleanup, I do not use these helpers for my cleanup. It's kind of all hands on deck so that we can move quickly. People that finish early, I have them do a little bit of pre-cleaning as well to support that successful cleanup. Hopefully you were able to find some inspiration from this video. If it was helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe. Managing the Mess posts tips and tricks every Monday to help you improve your classroom management in the art room.